Good morning, everyone. Now, the backdrop is supposed to come on. When you do see it, it is a selection of my mother, Feng Chaoling's paintings and calligraphy. My mother is my greatest role model. She was born a hundred years ago in China and grew up in a man's world. But she was a woman ahead of her time. In her outlook, in her scholarship, and in her many achievements, both inside and outside the home. Although she was widowed in her mid-30s, she managed nevertheless to raise eight children, and at the same time, carve out a career for herself as an accomplished painter, arguably one of China's best contemporary ink painters. Today has a very special meaning for me. It is the fifth anniversary of my husband's passing. So my remarks are dedicated to his memory, for his unwavering support in the 47 years that we spent together, and for helping me keep my sanity in the rough and tumble of political life. I have spent the past 50 years in public service and in politics. And during this period, I've received quite a number of unsolicited labels. So, the conscience of Hong Kong, the canary in the mine, the iron lady, the iron butterfly, under which label I'm speaking today, <laughs> and more recently by the local left-wing press, the old lady of democracy, <laughs> and one of Hong Kong's gang of four in the good company of Martin Lee, Cardinal Zen, and Jimmy Lai. But the label that I like best is one that was given to me by a local columnist, and that is Chen with the $40,000 smile. <laughs> Now, those of you who play Mahjong will be familiar with the tile marked 40,000, which in Chinese resembles a very to the smile. <laughs> I think that label sums up rather neatly the sort of person that I am. An eternal optimist, always looking for the silver lining behind every cloud. But don't let that smile fool you. I can be just as tough as the next man. It is a fact of life that forceful women frequently find themselves labeled with veiled attacks on their femininity. It's as if you have to give up your womanly grace and charm in order to succeed in life. Well, let me tell you, you don't have to become more like a man in order to succeed. Just be yourself. But what I do think we need to change is the ingrained notions that somehow certain qualities are attractive and therefore acceptable in women as distinct from men. Now, I'm not advocating that women should ruthlessly elbow men out of the way in order to get to the top. But I do feel that sometimes women sell themselves short, either because they lack the self-confidence or they don't want to be seen to be too pushy. Why not? Men do it all the time. So, like our male counterparts, we have to learn to press our advantage, seize the moment, and not be afraid to ask for that promotion when it is deserved. Women today find themselves increasingly working alongside with men, either as equals or potential competitors. And I think it is important to build trust and mutual respect for career goals and for life choices. And one of the ways of doing this is for women who want to combine a demanding career with motherhood to be more upfront and transparent with their intentions 
in so far as their bosses and mentors are concerned. In this way, I think management and the individual concerned can plan ahead. There is a great deal to be said for not taking yourself too seriously. We can certainly accept our role as listeners, as conciliators, or as brokers of consensus without giving up qualities such as self-confidence or assertiveness, which are essential in any effective leadership. In life, we need to learn to take the rough with the smooth. And we can reach great heights, but can women have it all? My answer is no. Because the fact of life is that women will always face more challenge in seeking the right life-work balance that we all want. And certain responsibilities in life will tend, for some time to come, to fall more heavily on women than on men. Responsibilities such as caring for young children, running a home, caring for elderly and sick members of the family. These are not responsibilities that I think women can duck. I think above all, all leaders need to learn humility. When I decided to run for election to our Legislative Council in 2007, I knew that it was going to be tough. But let me tell you, nothing prepared me for the challenge of going onto the streets to canvass for public support. And the mixture of hostility, mudslinging, indifference, but also support that I encountered. That sort of experience brings you very quickly back to Earth. But it is also a constant reminder that none of us enjoys the privilege of being a leader by fiat. It has to be earned and it has to be nurtured. There is no single recipe for success because life has a habit of interfering with the best laid plans. Let me leave you with two further thoughts. The first, develop a strong moral compass early in life, because that is what will keep you on course and always bring you back to a safe haven. Secondly, as you climb the career ladder, look behind you and give the girls and women who follow a big helping hand. This is where you can make a real difference, and I guarantee it will make you feel very good about yourself. I left Shanghai at the age of eight to come to Hong Kong to escape the civil turmoil in the mainland. Hong Kong was also only supposed to be a temporary refuge, but it became my permanent home. I've enjoyed a challenging but extremely satisfying public service career over 39 years. And it's been a singular honor to lead the 190,000 strong civil service across a historic but very successful transition to Chinese sovereignty. Having had first-hand experience of what it feels to put your name and your reputation on the line, I have an even greater respect for the democratic process than ever before. Hong Kong is but a speck on China's vast map. But we pride ourselves on the fact that we are still the only piece of Chinese soil where the rule of law, freedom, truth, and reason still prevail. And we are determined to keep it that way. So watch this space, or better still, walk with us. Thank you all very much.